and they play into that immediately because when the credits are, uh, you get the opening credits, it's silence. Yeah, there was really nothing in the opening. There were there was bird sounds. There were like bird sounds and barking dogs, but there was no anything. Like honestly, when they went to an actual scene, we could have been waking up in Gilead for all we knew because they've done that before with like the bird sounds and stuff. So I like how they make it so you're not really sure where we're going to end up like right out of the gate. But then you just get June's face and she looks exhausted. Absolutely exhausted and then I cut to Luke's face, who's clearly been crying. So we know we're picking up exactly where we, where Scarlet had um, had given a little wish list for uh, the ending of last episode. We had all said that we either wanted to like be a fly on, like I think Scarlet, uh, Scarlet, you had said you wanted to be either a fly on the wall or pick up immediately at the end of the conversation. Yeah, it was something like that. I just didn't want them to like skip way over it. Like I needed something from that interaction. And um, I was wrong, by the way. I was I had hypothesized. I don't know if it was last episode or the episode before that I feel I had felt like the story of um the last time June saw Hannah was going to crush him. I really thought that was going to happen. I thought that because, you know, to hear that no, um, their kid didn't recognize their own mother. That doesn't bode well for him. That's why I thought like, oh, that's, you know, that's just going to kind of throw him back to that assumption that their kid doesn't know them anymore. But then also all the things that had been done to Hannah to try to get her to that point and the things that had been done to June. So props to Luke. He's stronger than I thought he was. And he's stronger than June thought he was. I think that's like the major takeaway here. Mm Mm-hmm. And Luke is still insistent. I feel like at this point, June is just at a loss for what to do and how to proceed. She's just confessed, like, the worst thing that has ever happened to her pretty much so far. There's been a lot of shit that's happened to her, but I feel like this is the one that really did her in. And Luke is still there, like, no, we can still do this. We can try to bring her to Canada. But, you know, another thing he does, too, is he reassures her that this is what Gilead did. Like, this isn't her doing. This isn't her fault. She didn't fail in any way. Gilead is responsible for what has happened to Hannah, I feel like that portion of the conversation really signaled to me that this is the start of the healing for both of them because he gets to take on that knowledge and show her that he can handle it. And she gets to unload it. And see that her biggest fears are not true. Like before when I was saying like she can't believe anything he says in terms of reassurance because she hasn't given him all the information. So she's going to just put that block up of whatever he says doesn't matter because he doesn't see the whole thing. Now he does. And he says the exact same response. It's not your fault. Mm -hmm. Remember whose fault it is. You know, like he still tells her she's a great mom. And now I think she can at least start to believe it for herself. Whereas before there was no way. Yeah. And I also think that with him showing her like all of the newspaper clippings and the pictures and everything that he had compiled over the last seven years, um, it helped her see that she wasn't as alone as she thought she was and she wasn't as alienated um, with this fight. Um, and that she didn't have to shoulder it entirely herself. So I think that that was like hugely important. And like you can see it on her face too when like she sort of smiles and looks up and says, you did all this. And he looks her straight faced, dead in the eye and says, there isn't a day that went by that I shouldn't have done more. Which means that he's feeling that same sort of like, I, I guess, survivor's guilt that she is. That every single day like she didn't do, like she always feels like she didn't do everything that she could, but she did everything that she could within her means. He's doing everything he could within her means. So it was really refreshing to like, to get to see them connect over that, even if it wasn't like the sort of like romantic uh, reconciliation that we might have, that I, or like anyone else may have hoped for. It was nice to see the two of them now be working towards a common goal together yeah, with the same exactly. Yeah, I took the exact same thing. And I think that it plays into a love there. And maybe like you're saying, it's not the love that, they first had but I think they're falling into a rhythm of their shared interest is Hannah they now have these shared traumas and experiences and I completely agree with you that she was picking up on the fact that if he has those feelings of inadequacy with what he was able to do then he'll be able to understand her feelings in that and I think that's probably the first step to healing it just felt like a lot of progress for me this episode and 
it makes sense that it would. I think it went a long way for her in feeling that she wasn't alone in shouldering the guilt about Hannah. She needed that. And she understood it. I mean, when he says there's not a day that went by that I shouldn't have done more, her instinct isn't to, I, I, don't, I don't know, like to, to back pat him and make him feel better about it and to say the placations. It's simply an acknowledgement because she feels the exact same way. She's just like, I know, I understand this. She knows not to say anything because nothing that she can say is going to be adequate. Moira comes in, and she wants to know what's up, and I um, thought that this interaction was really weird, and I didn't know what to take from it. Um, Like, June tells her that she told them everything about Hannah, and Moira knows how deep that is. But then Moira says, you know, you have power. You should use it. And it just seems like things are a little weird between them. I, I don't know. I don't know how to put my finger on it, like, what did you guys I, I got the same sort of like awkwardness like they hadn't really discussed what had happened at um at um at the survivors group um and I feel like that there was a bit of tension there still to uh, to some effect um but I feel like Moira saying that like saying to June you have power you should use it is Moira's way of acknowledging that June's path of healing is going to be different from Moira's path of healing So it's sort of like, this felt to me almost like the same way as, like, when June and Janine were saying their goodbyes and, like, acknowledging that, like, they had different paths that they wanted to go on. I think the biggest thing for me is that it's when June first arrived in Canada, it felt like she was watching her life from the outside as Luke and Moira lived it. And now I think that as we're seeing Luke and June be- fall into a rhythm and get more comfortable almost instantaneously in the scene, we see Moira and it's almost like she's getting pushed out because with the further that June comes back into her life, now she's going to start to mother Nicole. She's going to be Luke's wife. Like as she falls into these roles, where does it leave Moira? And it felt just like she was displaced. And then it also, there was like that underlying, I think that Moira was probably helping Luke get through his days by getting him to put away these papers. I imagine this was an obsession of his that she probably was able to get him to move past that in order to reclaim his life in any sort of fashion. But now that June showed up, A, they're first, they're all out again. So I think it starts as a red flag for Moira. But then she realizes the first thing he says is that he has a VIP on his side now. And again, it displaces Moira from she couldn't do that for Luke. But now as soon as June shows up, now she is important. She does have the power. So that's what I took that comma of the power of her kind of just feeling like she doesn't know where she fits in this relationship now. That's a really good point. I hadn't considered the uh, the dynamic between the three or between uh, Moira and Luke and how that was going to shift with uh, with June's reappearance and how Moira is effectively kind of getting pushed out of her own life 